little how-to video on the energy bar charts for endothermic and exothermic reactions. We did bar charts. Um, the first part of them was just looking at the energy in the thermal, um, so temperature, and then in the phase, solid, liquid, gas. Now we're going to look at the ECH column or um, what's going on with the chemical energy. So we're looking at some reactions and we have endothermic and exothermic reactions. Uh, so just some definitions to go through. Um, endothermic, the energy goes into the reaction as heat. So generally what we're looking at here is um, putting something over a Bunsen burner or um, having a hot plate to help or on the stove, something like that. So we're, we're giving some heat, and then it gets transferred during the chemical reaction into this chemical energy. Um, since the energy is going into the reaction, it's coming from the surroundings. So the surroundings are losing energy to the reaction. This makes the surroundings cold. So if you were going to hold on to, say, a beaker that had the reaction going on, your hand would feel cold because the energy is leaving your hand and going into the reaction. In an exothermic reaction, energy leaves the reaction as heat. So this happens a lot. The most common place is a combustion reaction. So say, um, lighting wood on fire and the reaction that's going on with the wood and the oxygen and it's producing a lot of heat. Um, this energy is stored as chemical energy in the wood, in the bonds, and um, then as it reacts with the oxygen to make CO2 and water, the energy is um, leaving the reaction and going into the surroundings. So what we see is uh, if you hold on to a test tube or a beaker that has an exothermic reaction, it gets warm because the energy leaves the reaction and goes into your hands. So, um, and I've kind of referenced here a little bit that we have chemical energy. So I just want to make sure we know chemical energy is the energy that's stored in the bonds. So if we had H2O, it would be the energy here and here that are holding the H onto the oxygen. This one is relatively low on the energy scale, but if you had something like sugar, the C6H12O6, uh, there's a lot of bonds in there, a lot of places to store energy, and that's why um, you know sugar, carbohydrates, they all have a lot of energy in them because they've got a lot of this chemical energy stored and your body does a reaction to allow that energy to be released. So let's move over to the bar graphs and we will look at what an endothermic and exothermic reaction looks like as a bar graph. So I have here, first we're looking at an endothermic reaction and we have our reactants and our products. If this is endothermic, it means we have to put energy in for this reaction to go. So energy is a reactant here. So we're going to add energy into our reaction. Um, and that just causes these particles to move fast enough that when they collide, they collide and stick instead of collide and bounce off. Okay, so they're going to stick, and that energy is going to go from their movement and then be left together and form that bond. So we don't really lose the energy. So talking about losing energy, that would be the law of conservation of energy. If we have energy on this side, which is thermal, this energy gets put into the reaction. During the reaction time, it gets transferred into chemical energy of the bonds in the in the products that you have. So let's see how we would follow this along in our bar charts. So we're going to start off with our reactants and our reactants are low energy and most of the time when you use reactants you use room temperature reactions. Okay, So we add our energy so we put it over the Bunsen burner and we give it some heat. Q and this causes us to have some really hot reactants that are still low in energy. So we haven't had the reaction happen yet, but um, we have 
uh, sped up the particles with this increased thermal energy. We've spread up, sped up those particles to get um, more energy for them to collide and stave. So this is the reaction. So that arrow shows the reaction. And during the reaction, this energy here in these two bars gets transferred over to the chemical. So we see that we have these additional ECH, these additional chemical energy in our products, and we have lost that energy as thermal. So we're back down to room temperature. Okay, so this is a endothermic reaction because energy went in. On an exothermic reaction, energy is coming out. So that means energy is a product. And this again is also thermal. So if we were going to blow something up or in the lab, if you're holding on to the test tube and it gets warm, you're looking at an exothermic reaction where the energy is coming out. So if we look at our law of conservation of energy, if we have energy over here as thermal, energy had to be over here somewhere, and since we don't have a lot of thermal energy over here, it must be in chemical energy form. So um, looking at this, let's work on our uh, bar charts. We're going to start out again with room temperature uh, reactants, but like I said, our reactants have a lot of chemical energy. So we're going to give them a lot of chemical energy to begin with. Okay, during the reaction, we cannot let this energy leave as chemical. This doesn't happen. So the energy is transferred over into um, the thermal side during the reaction. So again, this is the reaction taking place. So we have very hot products. Okay. And you're you're holding this on you're holding on to the test tube or the beaker and you feel hot. Well, that would be this thermal energy leaving, because things don't like to stay hot. Your cup of coffee doesn't like to stay hot. Cup of hot chocolate, soup, dinner, whatever. It doesn't like to stay hot. Eventually, it's going to leave and and go to a cooler place. So we see this energy leaving as heat to bring us back down to room temperature with low chemical energy products. So this is an example of um, the energy coming out and an exothermic reaction. There's one more reaction example that I would like to go through and um, we'll kind of look at what type, if it's endothermic uh, or exothermic in our um, afterward. Okay, so we are going to start with um, some very low energy, um, chemical energy reactants. And, you know, they're at room temperature. But they really want to react. And when they really react, they're going to pull some of this thermal energy over. So we have very cold, but normal, decent amount of um, chemical energy. Now the chemical energy is still low, but it's more than what it had before. So we have a very cold substance. So this is like freezing. And we know, like, because we have drinks, that ice doesn't want to stay super cold. Or, um, you know, ice cream or popsicles or anything like that. After a while, they warm up. They take energy from the surroundings to become room temperature. Okay, so same thing is going to happen here with our chemicals um, as our reactants and products and, and all of that. So after we've made our products, we have this very cold um, products. They're going to uh, warm up when we add energy. So this is thermal energy, or is in endothermic because we are adding energy into our system. 
So this is going to be an endothermic energy, even though we didn't start out by giving them energy in the first place.